company and will explain you why you should work for them. This is going to last about uh, half an hour. And then we will have a second part of the recruiting session where you will be able to talk, actually talk with the recruiters face to face and eventually <coughs> ask, ask them any doubt you, you might have about joining the company. Uh, there will be no time for an actual job interview, but this might be uh, an opportunity for you to get in touch with the recruiters. Okay. Uh, by the way, I still don't have the presentations from Nexedi. Are you from Nexedi? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you will have to give me. The... It's fine. It's fine without this phone. Okay. No, no, no. I have a picture. Okay. Okay. Website, okay. It's okay. And from Gimglish, is some from from Gimglish in this room? Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, uh, you're going to give me, if possible, uh, a PDF uh, of a presentation for your, for your recruiting presentation. We will upload it on, the, on that laptop. Okay, we'll start with the Spotify recruiting session. Uh, our host is John Oslo. Please, John. Uh, do I have a mic? <laughs> okay, hello, everybody. I'm John Oslo from Spotify, uh, and we would like uh, you all to come work with us. Um, so let's see a start. So Spotify is basically this. It's a desktop client and it's a mobile client and it's a streaming music service where you can yeah, stream music and it's used by a lot of people around the world. Um, we're a Swedish based company um, and our sort of main developer hub is in Stockholm but we also have a few developers, uh, quite many developers uh, in Gothenburg, west of Sweden, and also in New York. I think about five in San Francisco as well. Um, so in total, we're like a big company now. Uh, been around for a few years, and we have over 600 employees. Uh, about half of them, maybe, uh, engineers. And yeah, so we have people from all over the world, uh, mainly living in, in Stockholm and New York. Um, so what is Spotify? Like, why is so cool to work here? Well, it's a technical challenge. We have 10 million, uh, over 10 million users, have way more now, uh, that are at least playing something uh, every 30 days. There's a term called monthly active users, that's, and that's about 10 million. And to hold all the data and process all the playlists and music, we have lots of servers, 1,500 of them in the three data centers like US, um, England, and, and Sweden. And uh, they're all running Debian, and they're mostly running Python software. Uh, so here is the, the, the bubble slide. I actually have a, had a talk in EuroPython last year and show this. Uh, so this is how Spotify works, very simplified. Um, the, the white bubbles, they are C code, and the red ones are, are Java, and the green stuff is, is Python. And there's actually like about 20 or more of these bubbles. So first you have the client, it connects to an access point, and access point have the session, you can log in, store the session, and then you basically communicate with all these services. And this is how we think. Write tiny services, preferably in Python, or like, it's not, doesn't have to be, but we like it a lot. That's why we're here. Um, and then, um, yeah, uh, basically you have to solve all the funny challenges with having 10 million users. So each of these bubbles, they of course has to exist in, in several versions, like, uh, there's not just one access point, they're like, I don't know, the 60 or something. So then you have other problems like the uh, consistency, availability, partition tolerance problem. This is the cap theorem and the, the goal is to eat the cake in the middle. And, and, uh, and that's what we can offer. We can, we can offer slightly inconsistent cake. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, to my left here are a few at Spotify there, I was standing on the microphone cord maybe, yeah, which is wireless. And <laughs> uh, we, we're mostly looking for people with a uh, computer science background. Like that's the very solid understanding on computers, even like at a lower level and a higher level, like everything together. Even though we're programming mostly in this easy language, like it's very, very, yeah, good feeling to, to know everything there is to know about 
the science of computers. So we have a, a, a recruitment process. It's very easy to just get into. You can start by talking to these people or me outside the, there. Um, and then you can apply for a job. And then there will be a few screenings and phone screenings and, and maybe also an interview day at the Spotify office. Uh, now I will hand over the mic to, to some other if you have something more to add. Um, or do you have any more questions for me? Oh, I'm already over, two minutes. Oh, I thought minus two meant like I was over. Please, shoot, questions. No, anyone? Anyone wants to work? So, hands up, who here would like to work at Spotify? Who would think it's a good thing? Yeah, yeah, wow, that's nice. Awesome, we'll come to find you later, or you can find us, <laughs> yeah. It's maybe worth mentioning that it's not just a company that's uh, solving complicated and uh, technical challenges. It's also a company with a really like a strong culture, and uh, uh, we all like love music, and we like to play music. We like to play music everywhere, and uh, we really enjoy music. And this is why we're all in the working for this company. We want to allow everyone to listen to music everywhere, and. Uh, I think that's one of the coolest challenges in working for, for Spotify. So if you like that or if you're into that, please talk to us. Yeah, so the, the goal is to spread music everywhere in the world. Unfortunately, we're not here yet, but we will come eventually. Yeah, or you can come to us. Thank you, John. Okay, now will a recruiter from Google join us on the stage? Uh, can Google join us? Okay. Uh, David from Google. Thank you, uh, Lorenzo. So hi everyone, uh, my name is David, um, and I work for this uh, company called, uh, what's your name again? Uh, yes, search engine, whatever. Um, yeah, Google, uh, working in tech staffing. So uh, in five minutes, Google, what can you say about Google? It doesn't. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, as most of you know, we were founded in 1998, um, still headquartered in Mountain View in California. Um, we've now come to probably more than 30,000 employees worldwide, um, and more than 70 offices, more than 40 countries. We're, we're also here in Italy. Um, I, come, I personally come from uh, the London office, and, and, the, and Stephen as well. We're not all from London. We're from everywhere. <laughs> um, so what kind of work do we do? Obviously, for most of, for a lot of people, we will mean search, but obviously we, we, we only that. It's, uh, so in terms of the area of work, we, we, we do software engineering, um, site reliability engineering that Stephen will cover uh, a little bit after that, um, but also many other different areas, such as product management, testing, um, security, um, web design, hardware operations, etc. Um, and we have a lot of different um, different products that we cover. Um, and I'll probably give the mic to Stephen, who uh, will talk about that. 
Uh, okay, so um, hi, I'm Stephen. I'm an engineer working for Google in the London office. I work in a, an area we, we call in within Google Site Reliability Engineering. Um, uh, we try and avoid the name sysadmin because that's really not we, what we do. We're, we're engineers who work on the Google product and the SRE team is the team that, that really sees where the rubber, rubber meets the road. So um, 1,500 servers and three data centers, I can't even count that low. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, 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 we have a, the team in, in, in London, some of the teams I work with, I work with the, uh, the traffic team. Um, they're, they're responsible for the global load balancing across the entire world into the Google infrastructure. And, and they, they work with, with numbers which are just so large that I'm not even allowed to talk about them. Um, the, the, I, I also work with um, uh, the, the ads pipeline people who, who, who take the information. You know, you go, you go to Google and you say, I want to... I want to put an ad on the internet. Um, I, want to, I want to sell flowers in, in New York. And, and then that has to get replicated to every Google server within a couple of minutes um, across the, the, the entire world. And, and that's the kind of scale we work with. So we work with incredibly large architecture problems, incredibly large uh, software problems, and um, most of the SRE team are, are across the entire organization, which is which is a very large number now. We, we, we work with all software developers across the entirety of Google. Um, uh, we're all Python, well, most of us are Python programmers and we do a lot of, lot of code and architecture um, and we do a lot, lot with Python. Um, in the London office, we have, um, uh, for instance, Google Talk, which, um, which has a, just a phenomenal number of concurrent users across the world. Every Android mobile phone, every, every uh, Gmail browser that's open, every Pigeon client which is connected is all, it's all connected in, in via Google Talk and there's a lot of Python code that you might not realize is behind that which, which keeps it running. Um, now I work, I work in engineering and, and my, my two colleagues here, Dave, D David and Andy, are going to be on the desk through Wednesday. If you're actually interested in, uh, in employment at Google, then you can do worse than talking to those two guys. Um, Andy, you, you're looking, you, you want the phone, you, you know, he, he wants the yeah. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Andy and I'm going to hit the space bar. And this is the reasons why you should work for us. Um, we've got a great work environment. Um, it's really nice offices. Obviously, um, everyone has nice offices these days. Uh, I like table football. We play quite a bit of that. But there's lots of different things to do. Uh, you've got music rooms, you've got games rooms, you've got relaxation areas, you've got sleep pods. And you get free food. And oh my god, I put on so much weight since I worked at Google. It's great food. So don't forget that. Um, cutting edge projects, all top secret. Can't tell you about it, unfortunately. Mainly because I don't know. He does, but you know. He really doesn't know. I, I have no idea. Uh, you know, he's got like a Nexus 7. I'm not even allowed to touch it. You know. Seriously, he's been sitting there going, ooh, and I can't, I can't even touch it, so it's really annoying. Um, flat hierarchy, you do what you want. The point is, is that you are all adults who have great brains and know what's important. Um, there is no point telling you to do menial tasks. The point is that we have systems there with what we need to get done, and you guys can all confer between teams and say, look, I really want to do this, so I'll do this. You're all adults. You don't need us to tell what you to do. So, you know, that's quite interesting because it means you work on what you want to work on rather than what you're told to work on. 20% projects. Yeah. I have to say, my plans for world domination have just now been cut down to size, so I'm no longer allowed to do that. My, my ray on the moon just didn't work out. So, But you have 20% of your time, and that is to do whatever you want um, as long as it's... To be fair, that's because there was another moon ray which was much further along. Yeah. I've now gone for sharks with lasers, but... Supposedly that's not allowed either. But um, the point is that you know you are allowed 20% of your time to work on projects that are in interesting, and if they go along a long way and they're, they're becoming very interesting, and you know people think they're going to go somewhere, you can present to Google boards to actually find if you can get little minions, or as we call them interns, uh, to come and help you. Uh, so the point is that, you know you can actually develop your own ideas, and some of the best ideas that we've got at Google are all coming from our own employees in their own time. So we really do value our employees and want them to have their time to be able to develop things which are really interesting. And lastly, but not least, work with the best minds, apart from me, unfortunately. I'm, I'm not up to that level. But I'm sure you're all really intelligent guys, and I think Google would be a great challenge for all of you to come and work, have fun, do things you want to do, and really not feel like you're at work, because that's how I feel, and I'm sure, you know, I hope you guys would want to feel that too. So 
come see us and uh, have a chat. And I'm sure this guy is trying to get me off the microphone now, so he'll probably have to come and fight me for it. But come talk to us at the Google booth. Come get a T-shirt. Come play some of those weird and wacky little brain, brain trouble testing things. And and there's a Galaxy Tab, yes indeed. We're giving that away for the person who wins the online quiz. So briberies are accepted. Um, higher the money, more likely chance. Thanks very much, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still got this one, though. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, will a uh, recruiter from Red Hat uh, join us on stage? Oh, yes, it's Tyler. <laughs> I, I could tell it was you from the hat. Okay. <laughs> Give away, right? <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started while they're getting the presentation ready. But I'm Tyler Shaprova. Um, I am the EMEA team lead for engineering recruiting for, um, all, for Red Hat. In, uh, for Red Hat. And I'm going to talk today a little bit about opportunities in our main engineering hub, which is in Brno, Czech Republic. So I'll talk to you about that. But also we can talk a little bit about some of the remote opportunities as well. So while we're getting ready here. You ready? Anybody in here use Red Hat? Any Fedora users, Red Hat users? Any other distributions of Linux? Awesome. Okay, that's perfect though. That's perfect. We 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 don't discriminate. We do hire people from all different backgrounds with Linux or with Linux. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay, awesome. All right, so who is Red Hat? Um, some of you obviously have already used our product, so you know, but uh, Red Hat is the world's leading provider of open source software. Uh, we brought Linux and JBoss to the mainstream, and now we are doing the same thing with virtualization, cloud, and storage. Um, and this year, we were actually the first billion, uh, open source company to hit a billion dollars in revenue. So it was a huge achievement, not just for us, but for open source in general. Um, and as a result of that, we actually gave several hundred thousand dollar awards back to the open source communities. And we were named as one of top, uh, Forbes' top 10 most innovative growth companies in 2011. And one thing you may not know about us is that we're built on a meritocracy. So it's not about the higher ups that their ideas are what are implemented. At Red Hat, it truly is that the best ideas win. And those are the, that's what's implemented into our products and into our processes. So let me tell you a little bit about Red Hat Engineering in EMEA. Um, our engineering hub is in Brno, Czech Republic. Anybody been to Brno or know where Brno is? Ah, nice. Okay, so I moved there from US last year. It's an awesome town. Um, it is sort of right between Prague and Vienna. So it's, it's a really, really great location. Um, we have there about 500 engineers working in development, QA, program management, internal IT, and customer support. All of our, our engineers are working on all of Red Hat's major products. It is not an outsource center. Um, actually, the design, development, release of RHEL 7 is being driven from Brno. So it's a big, a big accomplishment for that office. Um, we were, let's see, we use Python heavily in development and testing. If you come by our booth outside, we have all the stickers laid out of all the different projects that use Python. Um, Red Hat Czech Republic was rated the best employer in Czech Republic in 2011 uh, by Aon Hewitt. We beat Microsoft, so we were really, really happy. Um, <laughs> it's a big accomplishment. 
Um, we have over 20 nationalities represented on over 50 teams. So it's a pretty, it's an exciting place to be. This is just not good. <laughs> I always get the technical difficulties. It never fails. All right. Well. All right. So this is just a little bit to tell you about what it's like to work in Czech Republic, the kind of benefits that you would get as a Red Hat employee. We have a competitive salary. So we offer 13 months of pay. Um, we are a very we're performance-based company, so we pay for top performance. Um, you actually earn quarterly bonuses based on your performance. Uh, one of our nicest benefits, you receive free Red Hat training and certification at all levels. Um, meal vouchers, we have a benefit st a cafeteria style plan for health, wellness, sport, culture benefits, five weeks vacations, extra sick days. Um, we do relocate. So if you're open to moving to Brno, I can say from firsthand experience, it was, it was fantastic. So we will relocate you. We will do all your immigration paperwork if you need it. Um, or if you're EU, of course you don't need it. These are Python projects at Red Hat. Um, one thing I would encourage you, even if you think working at Red Hat may not be right for you or the location may not be right for you, get involved with some of these open source projects. So we have OpenStack which is an open source software for building public and private clouds. Uh, we're actually building a brand new team at Red Hat in Brno um, that, will, that will focus on this. We have OpenShift, and I don't, if you haven't had a chance, come by the Red Hat booth. Marek Yellen, our open so uh, OpenShift evangelist, is here, and will tell you all about how you can deploy up to three applications for free on OpenShift. Um, Overt, which is our KVM-based virtual data management platform, Free IPA, uh, Integrated Security Information Management, Cloud Forms, Infrastructure as a Service, Gluster, which is a uh, storage, an open source scale out storage company or division. And last, we do release engineering, security, software R&D, and test automation development. So all of this is done in Python. How to apply? You can go to our career site, redhat.com slash jobs. I will tell you that we have so many jobs, there is no way we can have them all on the website. So what I would encourage you to do is if you're interested and you'd like to work for Red Hat in any location, um, follow us on LinkedIn. Connect, you can connect to me directly. Um, we're on Twitter and Facebook and Google+. So reach out. I'd be happy to help you in finding a position or you know, pointing you to the direction of the right person that could help you. That is pretty much it. Thank you. Now it's uh, DemoWare turn. You? Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Tendai and I work for DemonWare. Um, DemonWare is a company founded in Ireland about um, nine years ago, um, which does online software and services for a lot of the world's um, biggest games. So some games that you might have heard of, which um, I use our services, it's Spyro, which is my favorite, Call of Duty, which I don't play, and a few other things you might have heard of. And just a rough idea of um, some of the, some basic numbers of what we're talking about. So hundreds of millions of gamers, um, millions of concurrently connected users, um, 90 plus games have shipped that uh, use our services, and some other random numbers about the, the scale of what we're doing. Um, but we're looking for mainly engineers, although we do have open positions for engineering managers and project managers. Um, but I'm hoping to get some engineers this week. Um, this is what we do. So basically, there's two main services that Demon provides. One is a transport layer that allows game clients to connect to each other securely and efficiently. And um, the other main product we do is the lobby services. And that's where most of our work goes in. So in Demon we use a variety of languages, mainly C++. Erlang and Python, and by far Python is the most um, common language we use. The C++ is really only used um, because games are developed in C++, so that's going to be at the um, transport layer that you see there. And Erlang is sort of our, our front-end server to our back-end services, and all the interesting business logic, such as what's listed there, matchmaking, leaderboards, anti-cheat, statistics, um, integration with um, social networks, integration with game websites, all that's done in Python. Um, and uh, we're looking for engineers on a variety of our teams to uh, work in some of all these things at um, really high scale. These are some of the jobs that are open. I mentioned Demon was founded in Ireland. We do also have a Vancouver office, though I guess at this conference, 
uh, to be mainly um, people working in Europe. Um, this is only some of the positions. Um, talk to me later outside, and we can discuss some, uh, some of these positions and others. As you can see, um, some engineering jobs, some software reliability engineering, as well as uh, managers that we need uh, for our teams. Um, we're looking for really top engineers, which is why we come to conferences like this. I mean, this is effectively a self-selecting crowd. We're all here spending a week of our time trying to discuss and share ideas and learn about Python, and we want to hire you to come and work with us on a lot of really tough problems, um, work with uh, smart colleagues, and, um, and enjoy some of the benefits we offer, which are really our only part of it. We want to work on hard problems. We want to work with smart people, um, flexible working hours, re um, excellent remuneration, free games, a lot of free food and snacks, free vending machines, all the stuff you'd expect from a, a top development company these days. We're a relatively small company, about 100 people spread over the two companies, so we uh, still do have a distinctive culture, and um, we enjoy working together and uh, building really, really good games. So uh, hopefully some of you will be interested in uh, coming to work with us, and uh, I'll be here all week, so if you see me walking around or during the talk I'm going to present later, bother me any time, and we can uh, talk about some of these positions. Thank you. Thank you. And will the recruiter for Spielo join us on stage, please? Oh. Yeah. Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Michael Fudge. I work at Spielo International in Graz, Austria. I'm a software uh, architect in the mathematics department over there. Uh, Spilo is one of the leading manufacturers of casino games and casino systems. Uh, we have customers basically everywhere uh, around the world in all five continents. We're licensed in over 300 uh, gaming markets, including Nevada, which is kind of a big deal for us. We are still the only European manufacturer with a license uh, to operate uh, in Nevada. Worldwide, we have uh, 1,200 employees um, in various locations around the world, and that includes all the salespeople and so on, so it's not just, not just the engineers. Right, so at, as we're at the Python conference, you're probably interested in the projects that we have where Python plays a role. Well, my personal background is the mathematics department, so I... I know about these um, projects particularly well. Um, we actually have an embedded Python interpreter inside our core mathematical game engine. I need to plug my own talk here. Uh, it will be on Thursday, 3.30 p.m. if you're interested in the combination of C++ and, and uh, Python. I will talk a little bit about that, how we do it at Spilo, and what the challenges were that we solved there. Um, we also have a grid computing system uh, at Spilo for the number crunching that we do on, on the casino games. There are some pretty tough uh, mathematical problems to solve uh, in, in these casino games. It's maybe a little bit surprising um, at first because the games look simple from the outside, but they're really not. Uh, the grid computing system that we develop is almost entirely uh, developed in Python with bits of C++ and even Haskell uh, thrown in there. And also, Python is used throughout the, the cooperation for testing. Uh, it drives the tools that the game designers use. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, we're not looking exclusively for, for Python developers, so I know that many of you have backgrounds in, in other uh, languages as well. So if you're good in C++ or in C Sharp or in Java or whatever, we, we also have uh, positions for that. A few words about the, the location. Uh, I'm from the Graz office. So these, these pictures here are, are from the Graz office. I don't want you to think about snowy mountains or something when you, when you think about Austria. Uh, actually, it's almost as hot there right now as it is as it is here. Uh, this is the R&D center in Graz, conveniently located 200 meters uh, from
from, from a lake. So you can go water skiing in your lunch break or swimming or playing beach volleyball. And as a very special bonus, we sometimes have rock concerts uh, playing just across uh, the office building. Uh, on Friday we had Guns N' Roses with a great view, I must say, from the mathematics office. So that's <laughs> free rock concerts is a bonus that you will get there. Uh, if you don't want to move to, to Austria, we also have a large R&D center in Moncton in Canada. Uh, and a small uh, game development center in, in Las Vegas, in Nevada. Yeah, so as I said, we're not only looking for, for Python developers. If you have backgrounds in, in, in other programming language, uh, languages, uh, we might have positions for you as well. And I'm told I will be sitting at a, at a table somewhere around here. So you can stop by and I will show you some some of the things that we do, and uh, if you have questions, you can you can ask them. So thanks. Hope to hope to see you then. Thank you. Okay. We will now have devil recruiters on stage. Uh, it was off. Oh, okay. okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Luca Taviano from Develer. Uh, he's Simone Zinanni from also from Develer. Ha ha ha. Thanks. Um, okay. Um, uh, some words about us. Uh, we are a software company based uh, in Florence. Um, and we are the local support group in, for the AeroPython and Python Italy uh, conferences. Um, we like uh, organizing Python conferences, as, as, you, may, uh, as you may see. Uh, we have been uh, uh, organizing them for six years now. Um, well, actually, we have been supporting the organization here in Florence. Um, we have done four years of um, Python Italy, and this is the second year of Euro Python here in Florence. Uh, so, uh, and if you look around, uh, many of the uh, yellow T-shirt uh, guys are uh, developers from Develer, so uh, they are really passionate about Python and spreading the word about uh, Python language. Oh, okay. Uh, what do we do? Um, uh, we are a company that develops handcrafted software for our customer needs, uh, which basically means that. Uh, we have no off-the-shelf products, um, so we actually don't build any product, but we uh, develop on, um, on uh, well, whatever, whatever our customer need. Um, but this allows us to have a wide range of um, products and uh, sectors. Uh, for example, uh, we work with transportations, uh, we work in our home automation software, and also we um, develop computer-aided design uh, software for our customers. Um, we are, we are a, a, a very small company. We, have, we are mostly 30 people, but um, 25 of them are, um, and 25 and more of them are developers. Um, so we are mostly technical people, and we are always looking for talented, uh, talented people like you. Uh, if you want uh, to join us. And, of course, you get free coffee. Our favorite technologies are uh, C++, um, Nokia Qt, um, Linux, uh, and, of course, Python. Um, we have um, 15, I think. We are now 15 Qt certified developers, and we like working with open source technologies. Um, we are open source oriented, and uh, you can also work in, uh, during your work time on your favorite uh, um, open source project. Okay, um, how to apply? Um, I must say that we really value 
um, we really value um, working in team and working close together. Because, for example, um, you can just learn uh, something just hanging around uh, and uh, talk, uh, chatting with other, with other people around the coffee machine. So um, be prepared to move to Florence if you, uh, if you want to apply uh, for Devler. Um, okay, uh, here you see the website if you want more information. And uh, of course, if you want, um, uh, we, we would like to see your source code because we want to, uh, we think we can learn a lot um, even also looking at your source code. It doesn't need to be fully functional. Um, so it doesn't need to compile or it doesn't need, okay. It's, it's, it can be a part of a larger project. But it, the most important thing is that it's written by you so that we can uh, learn how you, how you code, how you, um, you write code, how you yeah, structure your code. Okay. And um, that's uh, pretty much everything. And if you want to have fun, you can try to solve our riddle and send us the solution. Of course, it's not mandatory to solve it for, for uh, an application. Thank you. Thank you. OK, next are the guys from Gimglish. Oh, yes, those guys. Course you have. Uh, sorry, it seems you have some technical problems, uh, so maybe we are going to have better luck with the next study.
Uh, maybe it's yeah, it's okay. Well, it's not perfect, but um, I will not uh, take too much of your time. So we don't provide you a girlfriend, we don't provide you popcorn, we don't provide you video games, we don't provide you a good salary. And uh, yes, because we think uh, you are adults, and unlike other companies, we don't treat you like a child. But we provide something which maybe you won't find in other companies. We could provide you meaning, especially if you really care about free software, because we are a real free software company. Any use of proprietary software is strictly forbidden in our company. So, well, maybe, thank you for clapping. Now, maybe later you will boo me. You will see. <laughs> so, uh, my laptop runs uh, GNU Linux. We have an office close to Rio Beach in Brazil, close to Re Dakar Beach in Senegal. Uh, in Dresden, mm, mm, with very good weather currently, like in Austria, and uh, in Lille, in Paris, and in Tokyo. Tokyo also has nice beaches, and we are planning to open new offices, maybe in China or any other country, where we find good people, because actually we don't care where people come from, we just care that they like what they do with us. So, I want to talk, well, Nexity is a small company, so it's much tainted with my own personality. So I will uh, get naked. Okay. Um, I'm a member of Socialist Party. This is my political opinion. Yeah, you can check. I, I believe in Marxism, so you will see the consequences. We don't have any venture capital in the company. We don't make money for bankers. We don't make money for stockholders. We don't use open source as a buzzword. We do free software because we believe in freedom. Ten years ago, I was a key person in conducting the campaign against software patents in Europe to protect innovation. You can check it. And these days, well, you see, we can also have fun, like uh, eating uh, some stuff with another great free software company from Finland. So we make money by working hard on making very difficult products which Oracle or SAP can't succeed. So this is a kind of a semi-military satellite in Germany. We also produce all the banknotes for eight countries in Africa. So previously, very famous companies failed, so they came to us. We succeeded with ERP-5, and we got a bit cash. Then we use our cash to create new technologies which are designed to put more freedom in the cloud. So, one is called SlapOS. There's a fantastic thing happening currently. Last week, 5,000 Japanese companies fully lost their data due to some bugs in Oracle ZFS plus some uh, problem in a data center. So, the cloud currently is super risky. It can be destroyed by fire, by water, by earthquake, and by the bugs in the replication system. This opens a fantastic opportunity to a new concept, which I call Servers of the World Unite. It's not uh, Workers of the World Unite, like uh, 200 years ago, but it's Servers of the World Unite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, nowadays, there are some telcos in the world who are our partners. They put, you see, like, microservers in apartments. This is one. And it's a bit everywhere in the world, so if you want to destroy them, you have to get into many apartments. It's pretty hard. And also, we have uh, tablet PCs. So, like Margaret would say, this is not a tablet, actually. It's a cloud computing server, which is displaying nice pictures of uh, nice clothes. And then we have a platform as a service, which is based on build-out in Python. You just write your build-out recipe there, click on a button, and it will be hosted somewhere in somebody's apartment in the world. And this way, because we don't use virtualization and we don't use data centers, we could nearly reduce by 10 the cost of cloud. So now we have even a, a university is now doing a new cloud computing course called cloud computing, no data center, no virtualization. So we need a bit more people who don't care about uh, that we provide a girlfriend, the food, and so on, to help us on finishing this project. So if you are interested, 
and if you don't mind our very ideological approach to programming, so I would be very happy to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's see if we are going to have uh, some more luck again with the Gimlish recruiters. Can you please mirror? Thank you. Hello. Hello. Sorry for that previous little mishap, and thank you, Spotify, for, for the computer assistance. We represent Jimlish. Voila. Voila. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Alex, and I'm a software engineer at Jimlish, like uh, my colleague here, Liu, and he's going to talk more about us. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what is Jimlish? Jimlish is a small uh, Parisian company. Uh, we're about 20 people. Uh, divided up in engineers, uh, marketing and sales, and uh, content writers. Uh, we also have satellite offices in Tel Aviv and in Florianapolis in Brazil. Uh, our main product is English lessons. Uh, English lessons which are fun, basically. Uh, they're based on, uh, on emails, and every day you have a small lesson with uh, 10 minutes of uh, English exercises just to keep that English going. So for you as a crowd, it might not be the optimal product, but uh, a lot of people like it. Uh, well, today we have around um, 1 million users uh, worldwide. So uh, uh, one thing uh, is, is that our system adapts to user needs. So it's sort of like adaptive level. If your English is not very good, it basically gives you not very complicated questions. If your English is really good, it gives you hard questions. Uh, we use Python only. Uh, obviously, we use JavaScript on the front end, on the web stuff. Uh, we use Django, we use Zopi and Plone. Uh, MySQL and Postgres for the database. And of course, everything runs on Linux. Uh, we use a continued deployment. We do a lot of code review, everything is, uh, is code reviewed, and we really love tests. <laughs> yeah. And we're looking for, uh, I mean, since we're a small company, we can't propose all of you a job. Uh, we're looking for like one or two Python developers, uh, notably uh, oriented towards uh, web, web development. Uh, and why should you join us? I mean, you should join us if you're fanatical about, uh, if you're fantastic uh, as a Python coder or a web coder in general, because I mean, front end, JavaScript, uh, everything, uh, we, we need it. Uh, if you can and want to work in Paris with a great team, we're a nice small group of people, we're all young, uh, it's a great company. Uh, we have a very nice office in Paris, uh, we're having fun, uh, it's cool. And we have uh, some interesting problems. I mean, we're in the e-learning sector, uh, and there are lots of, um, lots of innovations still remaining to be done, uh, lots of things to do. And uh, we want to make sure that our products are, will continue to be uh, good. Voilà. Yeah, in the remaining time, we, we'd like to show you a small video. Yeah. Thank you.
This is our colleague Jim. We need somebody with special skills, an IT master who codes for thrills. Wanted, Python developer wanted, Python developer wanted, Python developer is a developer you. Do you think Linux is a powerful tool? Wanted, Python developer. Do you think penguins are really cool? Wanted, Python developer. So and blown up birds in the sky. Wanted, Python developer. Wanted, Python developer. Wanted, Python developer. Is that developer you? Can you program like a bird? Wanted, Python developer. What about color? It's a must. Wanted, Python developer. What about JavaScript? It's a must. Wanted, Python developer. Do you speak English really well? Wanted, Python developer. Polyvu Francais and Petit Peu. Wanted, Python developer. How do you wear your t-shirt? Tucked inside my trousers, maybe. If you want to be a Python developer, yeah. send us a CV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can buy this song on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. And now, uh, thank you. Um, now what's going to happen? Uh, we have volunteers here with uh, each name of the recruiters and uh, they will arrange over the room. We will be able to talk to the same recruiters who presented the company and hopefully uh, we hope that something beautiful will blossom uh, from this talk. <laughs> Oh, did I? Oh, look at me. Hi, Charles. Here? Uh -huh.